My dear cooked potential dropout, you're getting cooked by differential equations. It's all right. Cooked no more you are because I am about to turn you raw again. All right, let's start with the beginning of the beginning. You were in high school back in the day. You learned about functions, okay? And the functions can be a function of any type of variable, any, you know, any arbitrary variable. You can make it a penguin if you want to. It looks like less like a penguin. It looks more like a Chernobyl accident, but you get what I'm saying. And then you go later down the line, end of high school, beginning of university. You learn about calculus, basic calculus, you know, the derivatives, the easy shit. So, all right, uh, the derivative of f of x for this specific f of x is equal to 2x. And then you learn second derivative and then third derivative, no, 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 no. down the line, the thousandth derivative. <laughs> it doesn't matter past second, third, usually, honestly. Nobody cares about the rest, unless you're, you're trying to do some math scientist shit with higher dimensions, probably. Who knows, man, all right? Usually people just deal with second, third, usually. And, you know, in life, people always kind of simplify shit. <laughs> and most of the shit is truncated to the third anyways, or the second, sometimes just the first, if you want to linearize the shit out of everything but anyways let's let's, let's 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 talk about differential equations now so before you even stress about the math let's just quickly talk about what you might be seeing in this course okay what will we learn in this course what is a differential equation what do differential equations come from uh how do we classify them how do we solve them um find all the solutions to them basically right what should we do if we cannot solve a differential equation how can we find a differential equation that governs a dynamical system? So how can we use its solution to analyze the system? And um, the definition of a differential equation is really any equation that contains at least one of the derivatives, okay, of a differential function, uh, that's a differential equation. So in a way, so let's say you had just f of x as you go to x squared. That's not a differential equation. That's just a simple, you know, equation, function, you know. But now, make it this. Uh, 2f, uh, 2dfx of dx plus fx is equal to x squared. Now, suddenly, this becomes interesting now, right? It's like, okay, well, you have f of x. And then, you have that df of x plus this in a way well 2 df of x dx plus f of x that is together equal to x squared what does that mean and you know that this is kind of dependent on this so it's like you know the links are getting more complicated this it was just like direct thing like boom now it's like a boom and then boom whoa now let's make it even scarier what if it was like, <laughs> so instead of doing in this notation, we'll just call it F prime, okay? So what if it was F prime, 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 prime times F prime, prime, prime plus F prime, <laughs> all of this divided by F prime, prime <laughs> is equal to X squared. What the actual fuck is this? Well, basically, the... Uh, the subject of differential equations is the subject that's <laughs> analyzing all of this. This is a differential equation. This is a differential equation. This is not a differential equation. Technically, you could call this a differential equation, but it's like most of the terms are canceled out so that it's like something so trivial, right? So, bro, that's what differential equation has to study. And sometimes, it gets even more complicated. <laughs> so right now, all of this, technically, the only independent variable here is actually x, right? But what if I told you that some functions are variable, uh, are dependent of not just x, but x, y, z, t, for example. Now, suddenly, instead of just doing a full derivative of this, you need to first know what derivative are we talking about. So, okay, it's derivative partial derivative of x uh of f of x y z t oh my god my white looks like shit and then you do this with respect to what of x y z or t well let's for example this time make it t okay so 
is basically saying the partial deriv derivative of this will respect to time. Now, you can do uh, an equation that's partial deriv derivative of f with respect to t, partial derivative of you know f with respect to x. And then, uh, so we call this del, right? Del f del y plus del f del z is equal to, let's say, 0. When all of this is equal to 0, we call this a homogeneous differential equation. Okay, this applies for PDEs and ODEs. So, what you see here is an example of a PDE now. This is not just an ODE. All of these used to, these are ODEs. Okay, this is a PDE. This is a PDE because it's the it's partial derivatives of the function involved, and the function is a function of many parameters now, and that's a partial differential equation. Okay, there's some more examples, and it doesn't restrict just the first derivative. It could be, you know, del f of del uh, over del t plus del 2f del x squared plus del 2f del y squared plus, uh, let's say, del 3 or no, del 1000 f del, del z 1000. Whoa, what does all of this mean? And also, all of this is equal to either zero, which makes it homogeneous, or you can make it non-homogeneous and equal to something else that's not zero, so some constant or some other function. So let's just do it a function of t, okay? Plus a function of x, plus a function of y, for example. Now, these functions are different functions from... Uh, f here okay so to to avoid confusion let's just call it g h okay and i of y. so this can be some partial dif some other partial differential equation now i doubt that it kind of has a real application in real life it probably doesn't exist usually <laughs> usually there's no one thousandth uh, that, that we, we work with. Usually it just kind of stays with two, three, you know. The more the math gets cursed, the more you realize the numbers become more simple, actually. Uh, you don't see big numbers anymore. Suddenly it, it all just becomes, you just see one, two, and pi <laughs> as the number. Sometimes three, two, and uh, four sometimes. Uh, but these are the most common numbers you're going to be seeing as the math gets more cursed uh, when you study math for some reason. Well, it's pretty clear because most of the things we're going to be working with is variables and Greek letters mostly instead of uh, instead of with actual numbers. If your numbers are complicated and cursed, it's because you're still doing easy math, most probably. Just in case you forgot how to do partial derivatives, let's just do an example so you, you have a little refresher of what's going on. Let's say you have a function that's not just a function of x, but x, y, z, t such that let's say 2xy plus 3x squared plus 4z plus yeah just t okay sure that's a simple function it can get more complicated less complicated doesn't matter so it's just a random example so that you kind of remember what's going on now let's do the first partial derivatives of this del f del x is equal to so term by term 2xy so it would be 2y, okay, x to the 0 now, so just 1, so 2y plus 3 times 2x, right, so 6x, plus, well, this would just be treated as a constant, because there's no x inside, so even though you have a variable, in a case of a partial derivative, this doesn't matter, it's just seen as a constant, so this becomes 0, t also, right, 0. So that's the first partial derivative of f with respect to x. Now, same case with y. Here, it will be 2x plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So, just 2x. Now, partial derivative of f with respect to z this time, it's going to be, treat this as a constant, 0, 0, 4, 0. So, all of this is just 4. And, uh, with respect to time, is pretty trivial, right? It's going to treat this as 0, 0, 0. And then 
just t so that would just be one so del f del t is equal to one now the second partial derivative would be just take the again so d del del squared f del x squared is equal to well is there any x here no so zero is there any x here yes okay so six would be the constant so here boom that's a second partial derivative now same case for uh, y let's do this well there's no y here so it's just going to be uh, another notation we could do is just f okay y y zero okay here f z z it's a constant zero here too f t t zero okay so here how would you write it it will be f x x zero and then uh third derivative oh no no this is not zero here this is six okay third derivative here so f x x x is equal to zero okay and of course here like it's still just going to be zero and zero and zero all right so that's what a partial derivative is uh hopefully it clarifies some things and uh if you want to visualize what it means okay let's let's do this let's let's try to visualize what is a partial derivative since we have uh four variables okay <laughs> we're actually in the 5d space so it's hard for me to graph this but let's say in the sub case where uh uh, our z and t were zero okay and uh we only analyzed with respect to x and y so in the sub case that this okay z and t is zero so your f of x and y is equal to 2xy plus 3x squared then our graph is going to look like this now when we're in the 3d space and this is what the graph looks like what does the partial derivative tell you? The first partial derivative of f with respect to x is, again, 2y plus 6x, right? And then fxx is equal to 6, and fxxx is equal to 0. So for now, let's just take care of this case, right? And it would kind of be the same principle with, with y, but for simplicity here let's just do with x so this function if you if you uh illustrate it this is what it looks like now don't be too scared because if you're a little confused what's going on just look at look at what you see here okay so the x-axis is here what it's telling you is just like a more generalized kind of way to see calculus you remember uh, how like uh we in in just like uh, 2d it was like this and then you had uh, some function and then the f derivative was the slope again see this plane again as uh, as like the slope of this so what does this tell you well what is the slope of this curve this uh this not curve but yeah no this curve this 3d curve as you travel along x <laughs> and uh basically you have uh, these this is this is the plane kind of and it makes sense right because well here it's in the negative so as you were going along here well you had a kind of negative thing going on so the slope is negative it goes down and then it goes up again so here is basically saying it's going down until it's going up so yeah <laughs> that is the tangent kind of plane to this curve as we travel along x now let's do the second uh partial derivative of uh x so now it's just going to equal six and it makes sense basically it's probably just going to tell you what that it's uh this it's going to equal six the slope of this plane is going to equal six okay as you travel again along x isn't that interesting I find it pretty interesting. This is a 3D kind of representation of what's going on with partial derivatives. And uh, this is also really, 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 really uh, relevant in numerical methods. But um, 
while I'm making this video as of this very moment is because I'm teaching you guys a playlist on uh, ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations. This is relevant to PDEs, although we never really have to actually draw out the graphs. It's just that you need to use a lot of partial derivatives for PDEs. And uh, for example, this is a PDE. You see, this is all partial derivatives. You need to just have a refresher. What's a partial derivative? You can experiment yourself with partial derivatives by just doing the partial derivatives of a function, illustrating it on Wolfram Alpha or Desmos. Uh, Wolfram Alpha usually illustrates the graph pretty well. You can also tell ChatGPT to give you the graph, actually. Um, it does a Python code, and it's going to show you the graph. This is actually from uh, AI to generate this. I didn't code this myself. I didn't bother. It was pretty easy stuff. Even AI can make this. And what I'm trying to tell you is, it's pretty easy to, to get these curves to help you visualize what's going on. All right. Anyways, take care. Subscribe to the channel. Tune in for the next videos of me teaching you stuff. And uh, if you want to support me, it's on Patreon. If you want to watch my original content for a day in the life of an engineering student series, uh, it's on TikTok and Instagram. A lot of memes on Instagram. Uh, there's a Discord community with a lot of opportunities and resources for STEM students, engineering students more specifically also. Uh, a lot of opportunities, cool memes, notes, resources, and a lot of good notes and resources on my Patreon too. It's all going to be in the description if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this on Instagram or TikTok. It's going to be in my bio. All the links are there. All right. Take care. See you next time.